If you are wondering how to make the big money in financial markets, you have come to the right place. Surely, grinding out a couple of points from the S&P 500 future each day is not what gets you there. It is the careful observation of markets to identify large price movements and to find a way to profit from such. A great example for that category of legendary traders are Paul Commons, nicknamed Cuddles, and all of his teammates who have truly earned their place in our series of legendary traders, earning together more than 660 million US dollars on a single day in April 2020 when the May contract of West Texas Intermediate, WTI Crude Oil Futures, went negative for the first time in history. Imagine a large crowd of adrenalized former middle-class men in colorful jackets screaming and shouting after each other, making million-dollar trades just by hand signals before getting out with the team to celebrate the day in a pub over a couple pints and watching soccer. Unfortunately, as many of the good old things, due to the rise of electronic trading, the pits of the IPE were forced to close in 2005, so Cuddles had to move on. Together with other former floor traders, he founded Vega Capital to continue trading. His team was a mix of experienced traders and newcomers in their 20s. One of them was the veteran pit trader, Chris Rose, called Dog. The rest of the team consisted of Elliot Pickering, 25, who likes driving fast cars, Connor Younger, 22, who is the son of a building contractor, and Aristos Dimitriou, 31, called Ari, as well as some neighborhood kids. It is rumored that prior to his engagement with Vega, Ari was working in a supermarket pushing shopping carts when he met Dog driving by in his posh car. He got the job when he started a conversation with Dog by asking him how he could afford such a fancy car. At Vega, all traders are independent, trading only for their own account, but they mostly operated in a similar way, often speculating in the same market direction. Fellow traders said about the group that they were famous for their excessive but calculated risk-taking. They had balls of steel. After work, the group often spend their time together, playing golf, or watching their favorite soccer team, West Ham United. If they were not trading together, they headed over on a trip to Marbella. The group was well known for their parties and lavish lifestyle, celebrating and living the good life on the fast lane. Back to early 2020, Britain, together with the rest of the world, had just gone into complete lockdown due to the pandemic. Financial markets were in free fall, and oil had already declined from over 70 US dollars to around 20 US dollars a barrel. All borders closed, and international travel, as well as the delivery of goods, came to a hold. Airlines stopped flying, and ships stopped moving because ports had reduced their operation to an essential minimum. It is believed that it was on that day, early afternoon of Sunday 19th April 2020, when Cuddles realized that oil prices might still fall a lot lower and potentially even into negative territory. He stood up from his sofa and walked over to his home office. He switched on the computer and looked on the latest open interest figures of the WTI May oil future, showing how many parties had still open positions in this contract, which was about to expire in two days on April 21st, 2020. Cuddles concluded with a satisfied grumble that there was a majority of holders involved in that contract who would be forced to sell because they couldn't accept delivery of their contracts worth of crude oil due to the lockdowns and the low demand. So holding on to them could get very costly for them as the oil has to be stored in an appropriate facility of which hardly any was able to accept any more oil. Further, many holders seem to be in the market for speculation only who generally don't intend to take delivery. Either way, they all would have to sell their positions prior to the contract's expiry into a market which was lacking buyers to take on such positions. He grabs his phone and calls his mate, Dog. Yo, Dog. How you doing? Doing all right. Did you see the news? They're extending the lockdowns further. Yeah. Crazy the old world is coming down, my friend. Listen, I think oil is going down further. It'll go negative. There are too many amateurs in this market thinking that oil is already cheaper than water, but none of the pros are buying. They'll have trouble rolling over their position to the next contract, and they can't take delivery so that they will have to sell no matter what the price is. Let's get the entire crew together to meet up in the office this evening at 11pm before the market opens at 1am London time to plan out how we tackle this. If we get that right, this will be the trade of a century. Yeah, I think you're right. 
I was about to call you with the same conclusion. Let's get the newbies up to speed and move this forward. Okay, perfect. I'll see you later. The group of traders has arrived and is waiting eagerly as Cuddles is walking in. Thank you very much everybody for coming over so late in the evening. But as you all know, the markets are tanking and this is the opportunity that none of us want to miss. Believe me, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for all of us to get seriously rich. I'm speaking about 50 or 100 million for each of you. I've been around more than 30 years and I have never seen anything like this. Cuddles opens a screen showing the open interest figures and the latest information on the May 2020 WTI crude oil contract. Guys, look at the open interest in the WTI contract. All those parties will have to close their position in the May contract. Considering the current market conditions, nobody will be willing to buy those positions from them. There is no demand for oil due to the lockdown. There is no storage available for it so they will have to sell no matter what. Dog and I believe that the price will fall literally through the floor. You probably have heard some rumors from the exchange that the price may fall into negative territory. And that is absolutely what we think will happen. It will even fall significantly lower than that. Our target would be around minus 30 USD. If the market still opens around 20 USD later tonight, then we will have a 50 USD target range for today. Remember, this is the normal range of an entire year. There should be very little upside risk so we can go all in. We will primarily use the TOS or Trade at Settlement strategy, whereby we buy a fixed number of contracts to whatever the price will be at the settlement date on the 21st of May 2020. At the same time, we will immediately sell the same contract until our net position reaches zero again. If the market continues to fall, we repeat until our target price is reached. So, as an example, we buy 10 contracts, TOS for the price at settlement date, and then we sell into the market one contract at market opening around 20 USD. Then we sell another one when it reaches 19 USD another one at 18, another one at 17, and so on. That way, we don't have a naked short position, and we achieve an ongoing order flow of sell orders without crossing the borders into illegal market manipulation. We will just sell our acquired TOS position, which we can take on with minimal market impact, so taking on that position does not move the market much, but our sell orders will. This gives us an asymmetric edge. So, good old grab a grand business. Correct. Buying TAS and offsetting that position in the active future contract is common and acceptable market practice. In addition to that, I would suggest we also trade the spreads. All of you should use any spare liquidity to sell the May contract and buy the June or July contract. I expect the spread between those contracts to become gigantic. Let's see what we have combined over all of us. About 100 million USD in the pot. Margin requirement per contract is 5,800 USD. So we can take on about 17,000 contracts at max. One tick is one cent and is worth 10 USD. So one dollar movement in the WTI is worth a thousand USD per contract. Let's say we catch 30 of the expected 50 USD movement then we will be making 30,000 USD profit per contract. Multiplied by 17,000 contracts, this should bring us to about 510 million USD profit. So five times return. Not bad for a day's worth of work. This will be our legacy. But we have to be very careful building the position up so that we're not killed by a corrective move up. You must expect wild swings in all directions, in particular, towards the end when we get close to the zero dollar price level of the WTI. With 17,000 contracts, every dollar market movement in the wrong direction will cost us 17 million USD. We expect opening with a gap below 20 USD. From there, selling pressure will increase. 17 USD is the breaking point. Once we go below that, the selling pressure should accelerate. If it breaks through 10, then there will be a 
panic in the market and we should slice through to 5 USD with ease. When we go below that, there will be total destruction and it will fall like a stone through zero. We are speaking about 10 to 20 USD movements within a minute. Be extremely careful. Once all the amateurs have sold, the big guys will step in and buy this up. So it might only be down there for a couple of minutes. Don't take on any more positions once we go through minus $10. Everything below that is a bonus. Dog will discuss with you all the individual positions you can take on depending on your account size. As always, you are fully responsible for your account and your PL. Don't mess it up and stay focused. The coming hours will be the most stressful and demanding of your entire life. With that, Cuddles lets himself fall into his chair. He looks on his chart, playing through in his mind all the scenarios that can happen. Time seems to be moving slowly, and he feels every breath and every heartbeat while the group is waiting for the markets to open. All right, guys, get ready. Last chance to run to the toilet, market opening in five minutes. One minute. The adrenaline in the room is spiking. Okay, guys, here it goes. Market opens with a gap at 17 US dollars and 72 cents. Cuddles waits 10 seconds, which felt like a century, then shouts out to the group. Okay, let's go. We pull the trigger right now. Instantly, the room is filled by clicking noises. The market is slightly ticking upwards. Then they start their first set of sell orders, offsetting their take-in on TAS position. Market is still ticking higher. Guys, let's do a second round. The group sends another round of sell orders. The price movement slows. It is hanging there, like weightless, for a couple of seconds. But then, a large candle down emerges, prices have started to fall rapidly. When hitting 17 US dollars and 40 cents, the group had already offset their entire position of 17,000 TAS contracts. Let's get ready for the next one. Again, the room is filled by clicking noises. The market started to bleed down, slowly at first, but then faster and faster. At 3.50 AM London time, or 19.50 US time, Having just crossed 16 US dollars and 34 cents, the market starts to disintegrate with a large downwards move to 14 US dollars and 47 cents, and the team is selling more as fast as they can. After bouncing back to 15 dollars and 50 cents, Cuddles shouts out. Let's get ready for the next one. While the team is taking on, again, a fresh TAS position, the market keeps on rising. Damn, it's already at 16 and not going down. We've already blew more than 10 million of our freshly earned money. Guys, accelerate your spread trading. Selling the May contract and buying the June contract. I can't imagine that that was already everything. The market finally turns again in the favor of the team, slowly dropping further and further back below 15 US dollars. But then, another large spike upwards that surprises the team. Damn bloody bollocks, will you go down finally? That is the trickiest part of this trade. The market must make a new lower low below 14 US dollars and 47 cents in order to make this trade work out. But instead, the market moves more or less sideward. This seems to be a strong resistance. In his mind, Cuddles lets pass by all his memories about trading near a resistance and how much he hates it, having to speculate breaking through it. He much more prefers to take the opposite side instead because when the prize reaches a resistance, there is a high chance for it to turn around, at least in the short term. But then, finally, after hours of waiting, close to midday in London, the price finally breaks through and continues falling down, faster and faster. At 8.15 AM US time, the group has just completed another round. The WTI broke through its previous low at 11 US dollars and 10 cents. Well done, guys. I think we've already made around 100 million, so double in our money. Let's continue. But then, just as he said, that the market jumped upwards again sharply rising more than a dollar in less than a minute and erasing 15 million from the team's profit. Typical, bloody bollocks. As soon as you start turning optimistic, it runs against you, but not this time. You will not shake me off, baby. Luckily, the market is turning down again, dropping below previous lows. But then another round of buyers seems to come in, raising the price again sharply. Bloody bollocks, it's hanging in there. Let's try again to increase our spread. Bet buy another 5,000 contracts. The market is drifting, hanging in the air, but then it turns as if the ground underneath it had just opened up to swallow it, sending it down more than two US dollars in a few minutes. 
But it is not stopping. It is now falling faster and faster. Breaking through 10 US dollars with ease, reaching 8 US dollars, hanging there for a moment, and then completely breaking down. Yeah, my friend, that's the way. That's what we want to see. From there, it is just a few minutes until the price hits 1 US dollar, then hovers shortly above zero. Okay, guys, that's it. Now, be extra careful. Now it will get very volatile. If it crashes through zero, one mistake and it will erase all the 250 million we have just made. Let's do another round and we'll use some of the made money for more spreads. Silently, the group is gasping on their screens, looking on the price hovering above zero. Can it really happen that it crashes through this? Maybe it's better to stop now and walk away with the already made profits? But then, in a split second, it crashed through the zero at 13.05 US time, falling off a cliff. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Go, baby, go, go. And then another round of selling at triggered stop orders hits the beaten market, letting it jump down in a second another $10. OK, guys, be careful now. We are in the end phase of this. Let's start to wind up and do a few more spread trades. The team stares on their screens in disbelief, following the market collapse, another 10 US dollars to their target price of minus 30 US dollars. Guys, it's time now. Close out all your positions. I think that is the end. Immediately, everybody exits their positions leaning back, but one seems to still be staring at his screen, seeing his account growing by another $10 million in the matter of seconds. What the heck, Ari? Close your bloody position. It's gonna rebound any second and wipe you out. Ari flinched, frightened by that thought, and looks on the screen, unable to move. Bloody hell, Ari, what's wrong with you? By that, Ari woke up from his freeze and quickly closed out his position around minus 38 US dollars, just a second before the market rebounds and jumps up to minus 30 in a blink. His hands shaking, he stares at the screen and watches how the price continues to jump up to minus 17, then down again to minus 39. While the prices start to jump up again, the group is leaning back in their chairs in exhaustion but full with adrenaline. After a minute, they start realizing what they have done and they start to cheer. Guys, we did it. We got the big bloody wave and served it down all the way to the end. Awesome job, guys. We really did it. Slowly, he raises his eyes to the PNL on his screen. He blinks as he can't really believe the numbers he is seeing. Guys, we made it. We made it. We made more than 660 million USD in this bloody trade. The group jumps off their chairs, cheering and celebrating. We did it, they scream, we did it. And that is the story of Cuddles and his group of traders. In the aftermath of this destruction, billions of dollars in valuations had been knocked off the oil price, so it didn't take long for the authorities to wonder who made most of the money during this price drop. Expectation was that it were the usual suspects, like JP Morgan Chase, or one of the large commodity houses, like Glencore. Great surprise set in when it was found out that this little group of independent traders made the big bucks, beating all the big names on Wall Street. This was one of the greatest trades in history. Well done, Vega team. So what are they doing now, and how much did they earn individually? Cuddles continued living a good but quiet life, staying outside the headlines. He and his son made about $38 million during this trade. He still goes regularly golfing with Dog, who made around $90 million US dollars. Elliot, Connor and Ari made all in excess of 100 million US dollars each, with Ari being the highest earner from all of them. Elliot has become a professional race driver, driving Ferrari. We don't know if it is true, but Ari is assumed to have been seen in Marbella often, living the good life. Hope you enjoyed that content, and we have been able to envision and present how this story may have played out correctly. If any of the Vega Group guys watches this one day, please let me know. Would love to have an interview for my channel with you one day. If you liked that content, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much and all the very best to you.